You're listening to The Ultimate Guide to Journaling, a podcast for people who are passionate about all things journaling. With me, Hannah Brain, the author of the book, The Ultimate Guide to Journaling. Keep listening for more tips, tricks, and suggestions that will help you make the most out of your journaling practice. Hello, and welcome to The Ultimate Guide to Journaling podcast. If you listened to the first three episodes of this podcast, you might have noticed that it's undergone a name change. Originally, I was going to call it JournalCast, but the website on which I'm hosting the podcast is called The Ultimate Guide to Journaling, so that's what iTunes has called it. I apologize if that caused any confusion, and if you're wondering whether you're in the right place and listening to the right podcast, then yes, you are. It's still what was originally JournalCast. I've just decided to change the name to fit in with the name that's on iTunes to avoid confusing people further in the future. As you can probably tell, I'm not a professional podcaster. (laughs) So thank you for your patience and for bearing with me while I get a few of the technical hitches sorted out. In this episode, I wanted to touch briefly on some of the benefits that are associated with journaling. So in the last episodes, we've looked at what is journaling, how to journal, and some of the more kind of practical details of journaling. So I thought it would be great to talk about some of the higher level abstract stuff that we can get from journaling, because this is what it's all about. This is why we journal. The first benefit I want to talk about is something that I've touched on in previous episodes, which is that journaling helps us build a deeper relationship with ourselves. Why is this important? This is really, really important because as I've personally experienced, and I know a lot of other people who've experienced this with the help of journaling, when we develop a deeper relationship with ourselves, we are in a much better position to live the life that we want to live. We're in a much better position to make conscious decisions about what we're doing and why. We have a much better relationship with ourselves and our internal dialogue. We're a lot more aware of what we want to do with our lives, where we want to go, and a lot more conscious about the way in which we're living and how aligned that is with our values and what we really want for ourselves. Alongside this is a slightly related benefit. It's also really helpful as a life record. In the last episode, I talked about privacy and how I personally don't advocate for sharing journals because if you do that, then you're more likely to self-censor, or I certainly know that I'm more likely to self-censor. But that doesn't mean that your journal can't be a really lovely life record for yourself. And this is one of the really cool benefits that I've gotten from it. I love looking back and thinking, okay, what was I doing this time last year? What was I reading this time last year? What music was I into this time last year? On, uh, what date is it today? The 4th of April, 2012, what was I doing? It's not especially radical or life-changing, but being able to look back and see trivia like that is really cool. On a more long-term level, It's really gratifying to be able to look back and see how far you've come as well, especially if you've endured some hardships over the past few months or years, if you've had some really challenging personal stuff to deal with. It's really, really rewarding to look back and be able to see how much has changed, to be able to see how far you've come, and to be able to appreciate your resilience and your strength for getting through those times. Journaling also helps us set and achieve goals. I mentioned this when I was talking about the first benefit, which is developing a deeper relationship with ourselves, but I think this is really, really important and deserves some microphone time of its own. Journaling is a practice that consistently appears on the side of people who are successful, people who have an abundance mindset, and so on. And part of that is because it really helps us be more conscious of what our goals are and helps us work towards achieving them as well. Another benefit that is to do with what I've just been talking about is that journaling can really help us overcome stuckness and blockages. In one of the first episodes in this series, I talked about something called morning pages, and this is especially useful for this. As a reminder, morning pages involves writing either three A4 pages, or if you're working on a computer, 750 words of stream of consciousness writing. There's something about having that goal of the three pages or 750 words, and about just keeping writing until you get there. So even if you're writing, I don't know what to write now, why is my mind gone black? I hate it when this happens. Just going with whatever thoughts are coming to your head. It's really, really helpful for getting past feelings of stuckness or creative blocks 
or anything like that. The last benefit that I want to talk about is that journaling can be really helpful for processing feelings, events and relationships, especially things that might be troubling us in our lives right now or like I was talking about before, things, areas of our lives in which we feel quite stuck or blocked, where we don't really feel like things are quite going the way that we want them to go but we're not sure why. There's something really cathartic about being able to just pour everything out that is in our heads onto paper, especially because quite often these might be thoughts or feelings that we don't feel safe talking to other people about or that we might not have anyone else that we feel able to talk to you about. And in that sense, I think journaling offers two benefits. First of all, it offers us this safe space where no one is going to be reading what we've written and judging what we've written. We're not going to face any repercussions for writing down our thoughts or feelings. On a deeper level, I think the act of being able to work through these situations on our own and process them using our journaling practice is really self-affirming. I mentioned the word resilience earlier, and I, I do think that whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever you're doing, life definitely has its ups and downs. And when we can look back and look at the ways in which we've processed these ups and downs and which we've dealt with them, we not only learn more about ourselves, but I think we gain a greater appreciation for our strength and resilience. I do want to caveat that by clarifying that I'm not saying that we shouldn't talk to other people about what's going on for us. I think if faced with a choice, sharing is better than holding it all in ourselves, definitely. But I am very aware that sometimes there are things that we either don't feel ready to talk to people about, like I said, we don't feel safe to talk to people about, or there are times when we simply don't have people around us that we trust, that we have the kind of relationship with where we can talk to them about these things. In those times, I think our journals can be a really helpful vessel for what's going on for us and can almost take the place of a silent witness or a silent friend. So those are just a few of the benefits of journaling that you can experience with a regular practice. I hope it was helpful to hear them. The journaling suggestion that I want to talk about this week is another form of lists. Last week we talked about lists of 100 and this week I'm talking about more practical lists and this is yet another benefit of journaling. For example, one of my favorite uses of practical journals is that I keep a reading record. For every book I read, I write down the title, the author, the date I finished it, as well as any notes about what I thought about it, things that I found particularly thought-provoking, and details like where I was when I read it. I really enjoy doing this because it helps me keep track of the kind of things I read. Quite often I go back and look at my reading list and there are books that I've just completely forgotten that I read that actually I found really interesting or meaningful at the time but because that was several years ago, it completely slipped my memory since. I also really enjoy looking back and looking at where I was when I read a certain book because this really helps bring back memories that, again, I would have just completely forgotten if I hadn't kept this record. So what I want to encourage you to do this week is to think about ways in which you can use journals on a very practical level, whether it's keeping a reading record, keeping an exercise diary, and in that way it can be really helpful for um, helping you work towards your goals as well, or anything else, keeping a record of people you saw, places you visited, anything like that. Just exploring the ways in which you can use practical journaling to keep a more detailed record of your day-to-day life and the things that you choose to do with your time. So that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this podcast. If you have any feedback, questions, suggestions, or anything else at all, please feel free to email me at hannah, that's H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Ultimate Guide to Journaling. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. You can get in touch with me by emailing hannah, that's H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. Remember that my book, The Ultimate Guide to Journaling, is available through all major ebook retailers and as an audiobook through www.becomingwhoyouare.net. So pick up your copy and inspire your journaling practice today. See you next time.